What is up guys? Today we're going to do a tutorial on hyperlapses. Definitely something that a lot of people really enjoy and it's a bit overdue because who doesn't love hyperlapses? In my last video, which didn't get that much attention, I put together a little sequence of San Francisco at night, which included a long hyperlapse at the drop in the music, which I showed you at the beginning of this video. And I just feel like that edit didn't get enough attention, so I'm putting it here and showing you guys a little tutorial on how to do that hyperlapse portion of that edit. I have been MIA for a little bit. I'm sorry about that. I wanted to post weekly videos, but I moved apartments. As you can see, this is not where all my other videos were set. And I have been backed up with a ton of music video edits. I did a video for Blueface, One Take J, Mozzie. Really nice being able to work with those bigger names, get my name out there a bit. But yeah, I've just been backed up with client work and moving and we're back now. Anyhow, let's get right into this edit. Here is my clip. We were on the pier in San Francisco and then there was this little straightaway that I wanted to get a hyperlapse of. We started at the end of the pier and then went all the way back into the city and obviously this is very slow because this was me filming the hyperlapse. Disclaimer, this is a gimbal hyperlapse. It's kind of a cheater hyperlapse but it's just another way to take a hyperlapse because hyperlapses are just moving time lapses. You can do it the traditional way where you take a picture, take a step forward, take another picture, take a step forward or you can take a gimbal and just walk forward and take a video. This takes a lot more memory, has a slightly different vibe but it is still a hyperlapse and it still turns out really cool. This was a four minute 4k clip though so it did take a lot of memory so keep that in mind if you do the picture method you'll save a lot of space on your memory card so once you take your hyperlapse the second step is to speed it up so we're gonna right click our clip in after effects time stretch it what i ended up stretching it to was four so it's gonna be really short that's kind of what we want we want to take a, a long clip and make it really short so it's fast so trim comp to work area. Now it is a seven second long hyperlapse, which is a pretty good length. Let it render real quick. This is God's plan, someone stop me. I've been sent here from Illuminati. While this is rendering out, I just want to say that I really like gimbal hyperlapses. They save a ton of time when it comes to the actual filming portion, instead of taking a bunch of pictures. For this seven second clip, it would have been seven times 24. So I would have had to take 168 photos and that would have taken some time. It would have taken more time than just walking forward with a gimbal. Gimbal hyperlapses are convenient Convenient. It just takes up a lot of space on your memory card. Okay, now this is rendered out You can see it's a little bumpy because it's it's a long clip I'm not gonna be able to hold perfectly still the way I actually did the hyperlapse in that edit I reversed the clip. So let's actually time reverse this clip Just click time reverse layer and then it reverses it and now it's moving in the same direction as that edit But as you can see it does look a little different because I added some effects at that little curve there We'll get into that later though. now that this clip is sped up to 2500% speed backwards We're going to right click it and pre-compose it Name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it base hyperlapse Now the next step is to stabilize that footage just to make it more smooth. So we're gonna take warp stabilizer and let it do its thing. So now it's another few minutes that we gotta wait. This is your time. Whip out your phone. DM some girls on Instagram. Text your girlfriend. Preferably not simultaneously. Don't be a hoe. Point is, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. 45 hit 44 more carbon copies than you kamikaze. That's for everybody. And now it is stabilized, but it is scaling it 150%. This is not what we want. This is just not what we want. So let's drop down the smoothness to, let's say, 5%. See if that works. Now it's only zoomed in 120%, but it did smooth out that hyperlapse. That's pretty good right there. Let's actually try putting it down to 1% and see if that's enough smoothness added. That way it's auto scaled less. Now it's 105%, so you see more of the image and you'd obviously get a higher resolution, higher quality image out of that. So yeah, 1% is looking a lot better here because it's just as smooth, but it shows more of the image. A lot of times you'll have to go all the way down to 1% with these, so pro tip. So now that we have our stabilized image, Image, the next thing you want to do is add some motion blur. So go to your effects and presets, open up pixel motion blur, add that to your pre comp. And now this may take another second to render because motion blur is pretty CPU intensive. So it's just going to take a second to render it all out. You can also use CC force motion blur, but I believe in this case, since there's no keyframes on this pre comp, it's all within the pre comp. CC force motion blur won't actually 
add any motion blur to this pre-comp. Now it looks like you're actually moving faster and it has a more realistic motion blur feel. It gives you that hyperlapse vibe like you're moving really fast. And that is literally it for the hyperlapse itself. Now we're gonna start the fun stuff, start adding effects to this footage. The one effect that one of my buddies, Duncan Smith, actually told me about was that I could take the hyperlapse and cut it in half and mirror it to the other side. It makes it pretty much perfectly symmetrical and it makes it a really trippy, cool effect if you do it right. So what you wanna do is duplicate your clip, add a mirror effect to it. It hasn't actually done anything yet because we need to adjust these settings. And in my edit, I started the mirror at that curve right there in order to smooth out that transition. What this mirror effect does is if you move the center, it'll create a little mirror right in the center of the frame. So it'll have this effect and it looks really trippy because of the camera movement. It's not super smooth. So I'm actually going to keyframe the mirror. So reflection center and starting with nothing. And then we're gonna keyframe it to actually be a full mirroring effect after the curve. So let's create this mirror. You just drag the center to the left, bring it to the actual center of your image, wherever you think looks good. And there you go, got your mirroring effect. It's not perfectly centered the entire time though. So what we're gonna want to do is play with the reflection center here and keyframe it to be perfectly centered the entire time. It's going to be pretty tedious, but it turns out really dope once you center it for the entire clip. However, I do not like this reflection angle and notice this is leaking over here. So what we're going to do is flip this reflection angle to the other side perfectly 180 degrees. This is the final hyperlapse I used and then center your reflection center. That does not look good. That is not what I want. Let's actually move that first keyframe to be over here on the left side of the image so it slides in. There we go. Now this is essentially what I have in the intro to this video. However, we have not centered the reflection center yet. What we need to do is keyframe it so it stays centered through the rest of this clip. And this is very tedious. You just have to go through and do it, but trust me, it'll turn out dope. So go through and center your reflection center throughout the entire clip. You can go like every three keyframes or something and then center it again. You just gotta keep centering it as best you can. The more time and attention to detail you put in here, the better it's gonna turn out. I say this in almost all of my tutorials, if you wanna make really dope, clean edits, you just gotta put in that time. This is hot hibachi, this is Hiroshima, this is Nagasaki. One thing I actually did in my hyperlapse, if you guys are curious, I had these lights start out where the center was having them cut off, and then I keyframed it so that they, they would open really fast. So they would pop open like that. And then I added a sound effect of like big industrial lights turning on. It just added a little more to the edit. That's how I did that in case anyone was curious. But that's very specific to my clip that I'm just telling you guys how I did that. Now it looks like the hyperlapse is starting to leak off the side here. There's not enough image to cover that. So let's actually go back and add a motion tile in front of this mirror and let's make the output width 150 output height 150 mirror edges and that's just gonna mirror that edge so it looks smoother than what we just had there I'm actually going to go in after the fact and center this entire hyperlapse so it, this area is actually centered here anyhow back to centering the reflection but what you saying I'm not the one that you play with I think they really was thinking I was the next star you thought wrong or you all gone all done, all done. All done. This might bring back Don Now that I've gone through and centered the mirroring throughout the majority of that clip, it's not as clean as my original one, but I, I'm doing this fast for the sake of this tutorial. Now it looks like this, which is really cool because originally it looks like this. Now it looks like this. Creates a really trippy effect with that mirroring. The next thing we can do to spice this up is to add some position, scale, rotation keyframes just to like add some more motion to the shot or add some trippy effects. You can add a dolly zoom since we're moving backwards. If we add a zoom forward, it'll create a dolly zoom effect, which is something I actually used in my hyperlapse in the beginning of this video. So let's add an adjustment layer. Let's do a transform effect so that we don't have to play with keyframes directly on the clips. And let's start with the scale of zero and zoom in to add a dolly zoom effect in the beginning just for that first portion so let's say up to here press u to open up your keyframes and then let's jam that up let's say to right about there let's see how that looks 
Now there's a dolly zoom effect at the beginning. It just makes it a little more trippy because the things in the background, like the city here, are moving at a different rate than your foreground. And then for the second portion, let's actually add a zoom out because since we're moving backwards, adding a zoom out will just add more speed to your hyperlapse, make it seem like you're moving faster. So let's put another keyframe of 100 at the end there so it's zooming out through that final portion. And another thing I did in my edit was added some rotation keyframes. So let's add some of those. Click your rotation keyframe in your transform form effect at the beginning of the clip so you have your zero starting point and then let's add some rotation here at the middle so now it's kind of like you're twisting into that turn and then go back down to zero at the end and now we have something that looks like this just adds a little more mo motion to the shot keeps it interesting boom there's your extra position keyframing so now there's a dolly zoom in the beginning end is a little faster now and it has this rotation to just seem like we're turning at that turn and lastly we can center this hyperlapse further with this transform effect so do a position keyframe at the beginning make sure your center is in the center the entire time see right there it's kind of off press u to open up your keyframes so i'm just going to center it a little bit more go through the entire clip and center it this one is not as tedious and do this every 10 frames or so and nobody guns be by guns I should murder niggas when I buy guns and just keeping things centered actually does a lot for hyperlapses it really makes it seem like you're moving in one direction really fast and everything around you is moving past you really fast so don't sleep on centering your your hyperlapse of course you can do like an off-center hyperlapse as well but for stuff where it's supposed to be centered like this going back and centering it even further just really adds to the effect now I'm going to select all those keyframes and then control click to smooth them out a bit and let's see how this looks Ooh, there was some there was a big shift here let's center that again all I want to do is just drop bombs like you chair leader niggas with the pom -poms. let's see how that looks and that looks good to me. Just naturally from the camera moving around a bit, you get some camera shake in your hyperlapse, so you don't really have to go back and add a, a wiggle effect to make it seem like fast and shaky. It kind of just is there already. That is basically it. The last thing I would do, I'm not actually gonna do this physically right now, since this isn't a tutorial on sound designer color. I actually went back and colored this and then denoised it because it's a night shot and things got a bit noisy as I was coloring. <coughs> and then I added some sound design of the water around just some ambient sound I added some risers so it's like mm. I also added some ambient sounds of people talking as people passed by it just really adds to your videos to put good sound design behind your effects anyhow that is it for this tutorial hopefully this is helpful for you guys to know how you can actually like spice up your hyperlapses I kind of went over how to take the hyperlapse really fast there's so many tutorials out there on that I wanted to get more into how I edit these and make them look really dope let me know if you guys have any questions feel free to DM me on Instagram, it's at Drew Kosak. Right here. That's my Instagram. Go follow it. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know any tutorials you want to see. Go check out my My Year 2019 video if you haven't seen that yet. I'll put the card on the screen. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. Peace.